Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and a warm welcome to St. Paul's Cathedral, London, Ontario's Music at Midday concert. This Friday is May the 8th, and that is surely a date that none of us can ever forget. It's VE Day, literally Victory in Europe Day, and this year is the 75th anniversary of that occasion. Unfortunately, we are not able to celebrate it in the normal way of gathering and festive music, singing together and grand music for the occasion. So today's organ recital, I thought I would present a program that reflected May the 8th. So all of the music is by English composers and much of it has been performed for occasions such as May the 8th. In other words, music that's on a very grand scale and very ceremonious. So I begin with a piece called Entrada, written for the 1977 Silver Jubilee service of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. The service was held at St Paul's Cathedral and the English composer Greyston Ives was asked to write a piece for this service, a processional, something that would be very, very grand, almost like Elgar in style. And Greyston Ives is a composer who's been commissioned many times to write music for special occasions, for film, for church, and of course for this occasion he really did rise to the occasion with a wonderful processional. So I begin today's recital with that piece. Grayston Ives was the uh, organist and choir director at Magdalen College, Oxford for many years, a former choir boy at Ely Cathedral, so certainly well versed in the traditions of the church. I begin with Grayston Ives' Intrada.
most major state occasions held at St Paul's Cathedral in London, England, the hymn Jerusalem was always sung. The words are by William Blake. They come from the preface to his epic Milton poem, and the music is a setting by the English composer Charles Hubert Hastings Parry, which he wrote in 1916. It's a very stirring hymn. It appears in the hymns Ancient and Modern section under National alongside National Anthems, but uh, it is sung at most major state occasions. And when we think of May the 8th, later on this week on Friday, we certainly uh, recall the hymn Jerusalem. So the next piece on the program, the hymn tune, uh, Jerusalem, which Catherine is going to sing. state occasions at St Paul's Cathedral in London, England. When I was on staff there as an organ scholar, we had to play for almost an hour before one of these services would begin. So as you can imagine, it required a lot of music, a lot of repertoire, and we were instructed, of course, to find uh, English composers' music to perform on these occasions, especially around the occasion of May the 8th. So the next piece on my program today is a set of three pieces by three English composers, Walton, Bridge and Ireland. The first one by William Walton is a more reflected piece from this composer. We know, of course, of his uh, wonderful Crown Imperial March, um, which has been arranged for the organ, but I've chosen to play a more delicate piece from this composer. And then I move on to Frank Bridge's very famous adagio in E major. Very moving, uses the full range of the organ. Br Bridge himself was not an organist, but he loved the instrument. He was actually a viola player and spent most of his lifetime in London. And then the final piece in that section is by John Island called Alamarcia, a rousing and stirring march. Uh, John Island, again, not an organist, but uh, he was resident in London and loved the instrument and of course we know him for the composer of um, My Song is Love Unknown, the wonderful hymn tune and the church anthem Greater Love Hath No Man, but uh, Island's Alamarcia is number three of this next set of three pieces which I've entitled An English Suite and I begin with a piece by William Walton and it's taken from one of his radio play compositions. He loved to write music for film and this particular production was uh, the life story of Christopher Columbus so I've chosen to play a selection that's been arranged for the organ from that uh, score. So the next piece is uh, Romanza 
by William Walton.
The next piece on the programme I'm sure needs no introduction. You will all know this next piece. It's a song from World War II made popular by Vera Lynn, The White Cliffs of Dover. The final piece on today's programme is by the English composer Sir Edward Elgar. And of course, his name is always attached to state occasions when it comes to pomp and circumstance and music for great festivals. Elgar, of course, famous for his cello concerto. He wrote a number of wonderful oratorios, The Kingdom, Dream of Gerontius, and he wrote for the organ. He was an organist himself, so he knew something about the instrument. But this piece that I'm finishing with today began its life as an orchestral piece. Elgar was commissioned by Queen Victoria to write a piece for her Diamond Jubilee celebrations in 1897, and he wrote Imperial March. It became so popular that it was then arranged by the then organist of St Paul's Cathedral in London, England, Sir George Martin, made an arrangement of this piece for the organ, for manuals and pedals. It uses the full range of the organ, and of course you'll notice the thumbprint of Elgar, the composer, all the way through, perhaps slightly reminiscent of his pomp and circumstance marches, but nonetheless a very fine piece. I finish today with the Imperial March by Sir Edward Elgar for May the 8th, VE Day, this Friday. Thank mm -hmm. you.